Thank you. Well, thank you, Greg. Thanks to all of you. And Greg, if you'll let me take uh, just a moment in this opportunity to thank you publicly for your truly outstanding work as our provost. And let me say it's a special pleasure and privilege for me to be able to do that here at an event for Berkeley, which was your own academic home for so many years. So thank you, Greg. Thank you. Let me say, Chancellor Dirks, uh, let me thank you for your friendship and your leadership of my alma mater. Godspeed as you go forward in this new task. And I want to give special thanks, as Greg mentioned, to all of my Longhorn friends who came here from Texas to help me celebrate tonight. And to each of you, let me say you have been so courageous and so stalwart in some very challenging times. Kim and I and the rest of our university simply could not have done this without you. You are the very best friends that I could have. You are the very best friends that I do have. Thank you. God bless you. And if all of the Golden Bears here tonight will give me permission to all of my friends from Texas, hook them. <laughs> um, and I am so blessed with my family. And I'm so blessed that all of them, all of them, are here with me tonight. Matt and his wife, Jenny, Kate and her husband, Scott, Allison and her partner, Oscar, and Annie and Reed. And how fitting that they're all here tonight. Matt graduated from Berkeley and then the Texas Law School. Kate and Allison graduated from Berkeley. Annie graduated from Texas. And Reed is now a junior at Texas. So Kim and I have a truly blue and gold and orange and white family. <laughs> and thank you. And most of all to my wife, Kimmy, thank you for standing shoulder to shoulder with me during some very challenging times. And thank you for what you've done for you too. I love you. I also want to congratulate Larry and Bob and Governor Jennifer uh, and all of tonight's honorees. It's a privilege to share this wonderful evening with you. And of course, to all of the Golden Bears who are here tonight to celebrate and support our alma mater and especially to Jefferson Coombs and all of the wonderful people at the Cal Alumni Association who are responsible for all this tonight. Thanks to all of you. Go Bears. Yeah. On a personal note, let me just say, wow. I must say it is overwhelming for me to be here tonight. You know, I'm so often on the other side of awards like this. And now I see poignantly why they're so special and why they're so moving and why they're so humbling. You know, with any award, it's clear that so many other people are just as, de as deserving. And that any accomplishments leading to the award were really done by teams of other people who deserve the credit. And all of that is certainly true in my case. But as Oscar Wilde once said, very few of us are treated the way we deserve. And thank God for that. <laughs> but with any award from one's own alma mater, there's something extra special. Because in that case, it's impossible to avoid comparing the award to the young, naive person who first came to this campus. And now it's been more than 50 years, 50 years, since I drove an old 55 Chevy from LA to Berkeley 
and checked into Ehrman Hall in Unit 2 <laughs> and attended my first class. I remember it well. It was Chemistry 1A. I was awestruck. The professor had written the book. <laughs> Some of the elements on the periodic table were actually named after the campus. <laughs> and that was just the start of a truly unbelievable adventure. For the first time in my life, I saw the world in Technicolor. The university, this university, utterly transformed my life. I want to say that again, and you've heard it as a theme throughout the evening. Cal utterly transformed my life. And that's precisely why every one of us is here tonight. All of us, including my dear friends from Texas, showed up at a world-class public research university, and it completely changed our lives. And it changed the lives of our state, and of our country, and of the world. And it changed us in the long run, not just in the short run. It changed us through our entire lives. And it changed our communities in the long run. As path-breaking research came to fruition decades later, to change the world. Who would have dreamed, as just one example, who would have dreamed that Lawrence's work in high energy physics on this campus in the 1940s would today lead to proton therapy for cancer? And I could go on and on with examples just like Lawrence's. What a wonderful and transformative place Cal is. But we should make no mistake, universities like Cal are under attack today. Now, of course, all institutions need to evolve and they need to change. We need to look for new ways to teach courses, for new curricula, for new business practices, for new ways of organizing research. But allow me to be philosophical for just a moment. As Plato observed, the key to this process of evolution is coping with change and still accounting for continuity. Change does happen. It needs to happen. It's not just an illusion, as Zeno thought. But on the other hand, not everything is change, as Heraclitus thought. Cal certainly has changed since I first got here in the fall of 1963. But in its essence, in its soul, Cal hasn't changed at all. It still does cutting edge research. And it still educates students to be leaders and innovators in an environment that itself advances the world's knowledge. Cal still shows students the world in Technicolor. So change and continuity are both with us. Our task is to recognize what should change, what needs to change, but critically, what needs to endure to preserve the soul of these great universities. So Cal needs all of our help. That's why you're here tonight. And of course, Chancellor Dirks needs your financial help to keep Cal at the very top. And the Alumni Association and the deans need your financial help for scholarships and for chairs to attract and to keep the very best and the very brightest students and faculty. But they also need your political help. And my plea to all of you tonight is to help our chancellor in the battle for public support for this great university. We started this part of the ceremony tonight by singing. And we sang about our sturdy golden bear. Let's make sure he's sturdy for decades to come. So that 50 years from now, 
another woman or man can remember when they came to Cal as a naive youngster to have this wonderful university totally transform their life. I can't express in words how much tonight means to me. Being here across the bay from my alma mater, surrounded by my family and my friends from California and from Texas, and receiving this award. And thank you seems so inadequate. But from the bottom of my heart, thank you. God bless you. And if you'll permit me this phrase, hook them bears. Thank you. God bless you.